Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to make another requested prop. It's Captain America's shield from any one of the Marvel movies. I'm starting with just a single sheet of foam, and I need to find the very center. So I lay a ruler from corner to corner and then make a mark. Then I do it again on the other corners and make an X, which that is the center. The foam sheets are 24 inches wide, but the puzzle piece edges are not useful to me. So that means I can get a 22 inch circle out of one sheet and I can easily draw an outline with a pin and a piece of poster board and then cut it out. I am making this shield differently than the way I did my Wonder Woman shield. An easier way was suggested that uses just a single sheet of foam. Now this technique actually comes from Chris and his Lost Wax channel. And if you haven't checked out his channel, you should, it's very good. To force the dome shape into the foam, I thought I would help it by heating the foam with my heat gun and trying to stretch it some. Now this really didn't work out at all, so don't waste your time with this step. I planned to use a yoga ball to help shape the foam. And the first thing I did was overinflate the ball, because bigger is better, right? Then I took the foam circle and wrapped it onto the yoga ball. I'm using a small roll of stretch wrap, like what you'd use for moving. Chris actually used some kitchen cling wrap on his. If you want to do this, just use whatever is easy for you. Once I had all of the sides covered, I then used packing tape to help get the last of the bumps to lay flat. And I used a lot of tape because I really don't want any bumps on the edge of the shield. Now heat is what is actually going to form the foam. So I put the whole thing in the front seat of my truck. Now it's December as I shoot this, so I made it a point to park in the sun wherever I went to get the cab of the truck to heat up as much as I could. Alliance Heroes of the Spire is massively breaking into the top mobile charts, and here's what you should know about it. Almost 400 unique heroes that you can combine in over 10,000 different ways on the battlefield. Now that's impressive. It has two cool game modes, fighting to the death against crazy giant bosses, as we all like in RPG games. Or you can battle real people and even your best friends in a player versus player mode. And not to mention really massive combat between guilds, which are sick. I mean, guys, really, I could seriously just go on like this, but those are all scripted words. You know I don't talk like that, but I have actually played the game. I think the art's very cool, and I actually really like it. Download Alliance via my links below, and you get a massive bonus of 500,000 gold and 50 gems. It's a pretty cool deal. Go ahead, you can pause the video and just go do it. It's all right, I'll wait. Well. This thing's been riding shotgun for four days. Let's see how well the foam is gonna hold its shape. I unwrapped the yoga ball. Now, I probably should have used scissors and not a knife, but I didn't hurt the yoga ball or myself, <laughs> but you know, scissors would have been safer. I had expected that it wouldn't keep as tight of the radius as the ball actually was, and it loosened up a little bit. I thought it might loosen up a little more, but it looks like it's doing okay. Now, of course, it won't stay this shape all on its own. I'm gonna to need to cut a secondary circle to go inside of it, not only to put the straps on for my arm, but to help hold this in this shape, because if I just leave it alone, once it heats up again, it'll flatten out. I will need a circle 16 inches in diameter. So I cut one using my poster board compass again, and I mark the inside of the shield dome where I will need to put the contact cement to hold it all together. The foam circle does not lay as flat as I would like inside the shield. It is half an inch thick, so I trim the edges in order to fit inside the shield better. This circle is the one that I'll attach the straps to. I'm using a $1 leather belt that I got from a thrift store for my shield straps. I just lay the belt over my hand and guesstimate the length of the strap and where I need to cut the holes to glue them in. I do the same thing on my forearm but this time I plan to use the buckle as well so the strap can be adjusted for different people. I have a concern over how bendy the foam is, so I glue a couple of paint stir sticks to the backside right where my arm will be. Then I glued the circle into the shield. There are some extra braces inside a cap's shield, and it'll need to be at least five and a half inches long to go around the straps. So I make a pattern that's two inches wide with a couple of 45 degree angles, just like his shield has. I cut a couple of braces from some blue three millimeter craft foam, and then I make some slits so I can go around the leather straps. Mm, some more context to it. There are a series of rivets that go along the edge of all of these braces. What I wanted to use was a paper punch so I could just make some from thin craft foam. But the foam wouldn't fit in the only punch I could find. So instead, I cut the heads off some small nails. 
a lot of small nails. I made sure to keep the nails short enough that they would not poke all the way through the foam. I marked the braces every inch or so all around the edges, and this is where I want to glue the nails. To poke the holes, first I just used a nail, but it was easier to take one of the cut nails and glue it into a wooden dowel, and then I could use that to make all the holes. With a drop of super glue, I push the nail heads in, and that makes a rivet. Now I need to put the design on it. Now you could just simply paint it, but what I want to do is draw it on first and then lightly cut it out with a knife and come back with a heat gun and make all the cuts open up. I printed out the star that goes in the center of the shield so I could use it as a pattern. I poked a pin through the center of the star and measured the radius of the circle, four and a half. Then I used the poster board compass to draw that circle onto the shield. When I made the star pattern, I had also measured the stripes. The first two stripes are two and a half inches wide and the outside is just two inches wide. I draw each circle with the same poster board compass, just measuring out from the Sharpie hole each time to adjust to the new size. To etch in the lines, I cut out the star pattern, lay it onto the center of the shield, and lightly cut or score the edge of the star into the foam. Now I'm only cutting about two millimeters deep or so. I don't want to cut the star out of the center of the shield, and I don't want to weaken the shield any more than I need to. Then I trimmed down the star pattern to get to the second line and cut the foam again. Lastly, there are radial lines that go from the center out to each of the sides of the star. I then carefully cut each circle stripe just like I did the star. Now there's no easy way to cheat this that I know of. Just go slow and steady with the cuts. And I rested my hand on the foam to help me hold the knife straight and keep the cut the same depth. I used my heat gun to warm up the foam which opens up the cuts. Now this is where the depth of the cut also really matters because the deeper the cut, the more this line will open. And keep the heat gun moving. It's easy to burn the foam as you go around. I did that twice. Before I start painting, I wrap the straps in blue tape to keep them safe. I apply two coats of black Plasti Dip to help seal the foam and work as a primer layer. Spray paint sticks better to Plasti Dip than just to the foam itself. Then I apply two coats of silver spray paint. Make sure to warm up your cans of spray paint if it's cold. Spray paint works much better when it's at least 70 degrees. I let the silver dry for a couple of hours, and then I tape the star back on to keep the silver color safe. And then I cover the center stripe, because that's going to stay silver too. Making a pattern and cutting arcs into the blue tape made taping this big circle so much easier. Next, I covered what will be the red stripes with blue tape and paper. So I want to spray the blue on first. Now what I'm using is an automotive metallic blue paint and just a couple of light coats is all I need. So I'm going to want to give that about an hour. To... I'm going to want to give that about an hour to dry and then I can tape it off again and spray the red rings. Then I can peel everything off. I protect the center circle so I can paint the red stripes on. And again, I just use a couple of light dusting coats. With as cold as it is, an hour was not enough time for the blue paint to fully dry, and the tape pulled some of the paint up. Drying overnight probably would have been better, and I'm not willing to use more tape to mask again, so I spray some blue paint into a cap from some empty spray glue. Then I can lightly brush on more paint. I can get one swipe on only, because the wet paint will dissolve the first layer and then just erased what I had. I still did two coats again and tried to make it even. Once all of that was safe to the touch, I flipped the shield over and used black shoe polish to outline all of the rivets and braces on the back side of the shield. Now in a couple of days, I'll use a gloss clear coat to really put a shine on the shield. All the materials I used in this project, I picked up locally, and I put a part list in the description. I'd like to say thank you to Chris and his channel, Lost Wax, for a great idea on how to easily dome the shield on a yoga ball. But the rest of this, this is how Odin makes.
I have a Patreon page where you can win props that were made right here in the show. Plus, I have polls where you can vote on what the next prop is that I'm gonna make. If you like the video or have any ideas for something else for me to make, please leave them in the comments below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture. Like a double cheeseburger, onion rings, and a large orange drink. Hey, did, did you want anything?